Next, let's talk about the facade or facade. Here we want to wrap around another object, but in this case, not a single object, but a whole subsystem of objects. So multiple objects and provide a simpler, higher level interface to the client. So the facade, what is the context? So we are working with a complex structure of objects and maybe objects which have a different programming paradigms. For example, if you want to call some methods uh, from, from um, so we are programming C++, so we can do object-oriented programming and we are calling a library from C, which is a structured approach. Um, we have to use different paradigms, which we are not used to. For example, legacy databases could be built up in this structured way that we always have to call some methods in order to do something. And instead we want to use an object-oriented way. So the problem is, um, how can we use, how can we use, uh, make use of, of um, a complex system w without this complexity? We want to use it in a more intuitive way. Think of the machine learning library by Google, which has just some, some very high level methods to train our neural net and to test it and so on. We don't have to cope with all the mathematics underneath. So the forces are, sometimes we, we use different programming paradigms from different platforms um, and developers are used to their own environments. So if a Java programmer and a C Sharp programmer or a Java programmer and a Python pro programmer clash, clash together, they fight what is the best programming language. Um, actually, actually uh, there is no best programming language, but still users are accustomed uh, to their own environments. You always want to program in this language which you know best. Um, yeah. If you mix up all those paradigms, it becomes very difficult to maintain. That's why in the first semester of computer science in ESP, you have really to stick to this single coding standard. And uh, later on, it's also very important to stick to a common standard, to a common paradigm in order to make it readable and maintainable. So, um, yeah. Also, if we use some external library, we cannot change the source code. So this is the same as in the, the where did we tell it? In the, yeah, uh, in the object adapter. We also mentioned this force. And maybe we want to hide away some details of the implementation. So the solution is to implement a simpler, more high level interface. And this high level interface should hide the complexities underneath. And of course, this is very often done when you use um, older libraries from structured languages in newer uh, languages. For example, if you use some, uh, for example, NumPy. NumPy is a perfect example where the, the actual, actual mathematics are written in C or C++ and sometimes even a sampler to make it really, really fast and are used in Python. And the interface is completely different. So the consequences by using a facade, you provide a cohesive, robust interface to the clients. It's easier to use and maintain for the clients. The code is easier to learn and maintain. Um, but one drawback is that it may diminish functionality because we don't know the underlying mechanisms anymore and we can't access it as an end developer. developer. So we lose the benefits. Maybe uh, we want to do some really uh, high performance computing and we want to use some special functions which are lost due to the facade. And also we have uh, again this additional layer of indirection and this could lead to a performance degradation. So the facade, think of a nice wrapping around the present or um, the old professor Christian Kreiner who also 
teached design patterns many years ago also like to call it the Kraken. 